hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use make files with Python. It's somewhat uncommon, but actually really, really nice. These tools go together nicely. Uh, I'll share with you why I think this is a good idea. I'll show you how to do it, how to set up a virtual environment, how you can kind of do this in VS Code. And if you stay all the way to the end, uh, I'll give you a sense of, of why I think these are great tools that really come together nicely. Really, I think that using makefiles with Python does make some things really nice and it works everywhere. Uh, it's really a great combination. All right, so here is my Python program. What I'm going to do is just show you how I run it, test it, install the dependencies, whatever, using the command line here in VS Code down at the bottom. And then I'm going to show how to do the same thing in makefiles and you're going to see that it's better uh, or easier or, or just more fun. I don't know. But, but here's my program. I have this app.py and it calls this API get fact before which it, it asks you to enter a number. Here's my API, right? It imports requests. It gets a fact about a number and it calls this URL. It calls this number's API, assuming it gets a 200 back. It, it gives the response back to you. Um, yeah, so that's the program. It's pretty simple, but, but it's a little bit fun. So I have to add into my requirements that I need this request library, and then I can run it. So the first thing I need to do to run it is install my requirements with pip, and then they're installed, and then I can run my program. And then it just asks you for a number. I'm going to put in 123. 123 is the atomic number of the yet-to-be-discovered element, your bitrium. Interesting. Did not know that. Let's try this again. Same number. 123 is the electricity emergency telephone number in Indonesia. And th this is just how the numbers API works. It returns facts about numbers. We can try much smaller ones, right? Like three is the number of performers in a trio. An interesting thing about Python and using makefiles is makefiles are normally used for compiled code, right? It's usually a build tool that you use to build things. And Python is an interpreted program, you don't need to compile it, you just run it. Um, or is it, right? You can see that when I ran this, this PyCache was created, and it was actually compiled. This is the Python C code right here. The line between interpreted code and compiled code is actually, uh, it's a murky line, it's not clear what is what. And uh, you can use makefiles for interpreted languages all the time. That's what I'm going to show you. Um, so, so far we we installed our requirements and we ran the program. Uh, we might also want to clean up by removing that PyCache folder. Then we just have our, our normal stuff there. Okay, so now you kind of understand the actions that I might be taking as part of this project. Let's put them in a makefile. So uh, the way that makefiles are structured is you have a target name. In this case, my, my target name is setup. Then you have a list of prerequisites here, things that has to happen first, and then you have a recipe, which is kind of a multi-line list of steps that need to happen. So my target here named setup, it has a prereq on this requirements file, which is where these uh, dependencies are, and then it runs pip install. The reason it lists requirements here as a dependency is because if I add a new file to requirements, then we need to run the setup again to install it. Next, I have my run step. So for run, I have a prerequisite, which is the setup, because I, I need to install all this stuff before I run it. And then I just run it. And then clean is removing my PyCache so that I can clean any of that out. Down here, you can see that I list run and clean as phony steps. That's because in a make file, there is an expectation that the target name is going to correspond to a file. This target name here corresponds to the file requirements.txt. And if I were to add a file run here, I don't want makefile to get confused that this run is referring to that file. Instead, I say it's a phony target. It doesn't actually refer to a file. Um, yeah, the other thing I have up top here is a default goal. This is just a way to say, if you just run make without specifying anything, then it's going to run this run step, which is pretty convenient because it's telling people how to use your project. You as a Python developer might know, hey, Yes, I want to run Python uh, in order to run this app. But which, which uh, file do you start it with? And if they're not a Python developer, maybe they don't know. Yeah, so the defaults are, are pretty helpful, I think. 
So that's the first version. Um, but actually, I don't just want to run pip install globally. I, I would like to use a virtual environment. So I'm going to start and create my virtual environment. I'm going to make my activate script executable. Then I'm going to source the activate script. And now you can see I am inside of my virtual environment. When I'm inside it, right, then obviously I can install all my requirements. Then inside that environment, I can run my script. There are four types of blood. So let's take that and let's adapt that to a make file. So we want to use a virtual environment and install all our dependencies inside of there. So there's actually a couple ways to do this. I'm going to cover both. Ignoring the top here, the first thing that I've done is I've set up a target for the activate script. And I've said the activate script depends on requirements. So when the activate script is called, we are going to create a new environment. We are going to cmod that file. We are going to activate it by sourcing that file. And then we're going to do our pip install requirements. So it's the exact same steps as before. That will do our initial virtual environment creation. If it already exists and we want to just create it, we have this vmf target. So the vmf target will just do the sourcing of that file, which will get us inside of the virtual environment, which means that when we run our run, if we make it depend on vmf, which is depend on setting up this virtual environment, then we can run our app inside of the environment. So here on uh, Mac OS, the default version of Make is pretty old. It's 3.81. Make, uh, if you're greater than 3.82, I believe, it has this command uh, or this, I don't know, is it a command? Uh, I don't know. Anyways, you can say one shell. When you say one shell, um, it changes so that each of these recipes, rather than being activated, uh, run in its own subprocess is all run in the same one, which is actually what we want, right? Because when we activate here, our virtual environment, we want the run down here to be inside of that same shell, right? So one shell is the command we need to give to make to make that happen. Uh, if, however, you, like me, have a very old version of uh, make, then this one shell will just be ignored and it will run them each in a separate thing. In which case, uh, we can use a little trick, which is we just make sure that we use the right pythons and pips. So here I've extracted my Python to refer to the version that will be inside of my virtual environment and the same for pip, right? So here, even if the one shell doesn't hit, we're still referring correctly to the right pip and the right Python. And also an even better way than that is what I did is I just did brew install make and that gives me gmake, which is the later version. Right there, I have 4.4. And so if I do gmake run, we can see that it activates our virtual environment and then it runs the program, which we can run like that. And same goes for make because we've wrapped our Python. We can do make run. Same thing will happen. Right, but but our virtual environment's already been activated at this point. So just to prove to you this actually works, let's clear it or clean it, uh, as the name might be, and then we're gonna run our make run. You can see there was no virtual environment, so we have to create it, right? Which will take a second. Then it's installing all our requirements. You can see they're all being installed into our environment, and then we can run like that. And then the second time that we run that, you see it doesn't have to do it because it's already activated. And the same uh, will happen if we use our gmake, which is you know just better uh, in all ways. It's a, a problem I've been bit by before. Uh, many times the version of a Unix tool on macOS is just kind of old. Uh, there we go. So yeah, you want to, if you're, if you're using virtual environments, if you're using Python, you want to use a make file, this is all you need to know. Uh, use this one shell, use a you know, fairly recent version of make. You can set a default goal, 
so that when I just do make, it will run it without any specific input. And yeah, follow this overall process and you'll have a great make file. And yeah, it just makes working with a Python project even easier. That's kind of why I like make files. You can use them with any language. You can use them, you know, to do things like this. And you can use them just for simple task runners, right? If you just have a step like to run a test or to print something out or, or look at a log file, easy to put it in a make file. And then it's just tracked there. You have a nice central place where you list all, all the things you work on. And, you know, like you learn make once and, you know, don't create the super largest, hairiest make file ever because they can get a bit painful. But that's a skill that'll pay dividends because make has been around forever and it will continue to, to be around. And it works great with whatever tool you're using. I like this VS Code, has this nice make file runner. If you want buttons rather than command line, you know, you can set up here. Uh, what do I want? So my build process, I'll just call my build process run. And then if I use this button, then you can see this is running here. There we go. All of a sudden, I am able to use these buttons like it's an IDE but it's just a makefile. So that is makefiles in Python. Uh, I think they're great. If you want to learn more about software development, you know, subscribe to this channel or, or just come back. I work for Earthly. If you like makefiles, Earthly is a build tool. It's kind of like Docker for builds. It lets you run your CI builds locally as well as in whatever environment in CI. Um, it's very nice and very cool and open source probably works with your existing CI. And if you like make files, uh, I think you're going to like it. So check that out at earthly.dev or, you know, down in the description, you'll find a link to it. Yeah. So that's my video. Thank you very much.